Okay, so today I want to talk to you about a topic that's really important for the Christian life, uh, but it's also a topic that we spend very little time talking about in the church. It's the topic of making decisions. And I know that sounds unimportant and mundane, but think about it for a moment. Uh, this is one of the most important things that we could discuss because making decisions is something that we do on a daily, moment by moment, maybe second by second basis. And as followers of Jesus, we assume correctly that he has an opinion on the decisions that we make, right? We know that he there are things that he would probably have us do, and yet we know there are also probably some things that he wouldn't have us do. And the great thing about Jesus is what he asks us to do, uh, the things, the ways that he calls us to live our lives, they aren't random criteria that he chose, right? So the Bible says, don't marry a person who isn't a believer. And we say, why God? And he, he isn't saying, because I felt like being picky and petty, right? That's not how it works. The, the guidelines, the thou shalts and the thou shalts nots are in the Bible for our good. In other words, God calls us to be obedient to him with our choices for his glory and for our benefit. So it works better for us when we honor God with our choices. But how do we decide? Right? How do we make sure that we're making decisions that would be pleasing to God? How do I know that decisions that I'm making are in keeping with God's will? And speaking of God's will, how do I know what that is anyway? So making wise spiritual decisions isn't perhaps uh, as easy as many of us would think. In fact, uh, probably this is something that you've experienced personally, having to make a decision that uh, was difficult. So maybe you had to choose between a sport and another extracurricular activity or you're choosing whether or not to date a person, or perhaps you've even begun to think about where you might go to college. These can be really difficult decisions, and they're complicated by two theological ideas that permeate the Christian culture that seem mutually exclusive, that they can't both be true at the same time. So firstly is the issue of God's sovereignty, right? And all throughout the scriptures, we're told of God's sovereignty over what happens in his world, his knowledge of what will happen beforehand, and in some sense, his control and complete direction of those events. So uh, if God knows what's about to happen, and if he's in control of what's about to happen, how can I get him to tell me what's about to happen so that I can make the right decision? Or how can I influence him to make happen what I want to happen? Right, so those are the kind of questions that we come to God with. So this idea of God's sovereignty, it complicates our decision making. But another idea that we learn from the scriptures and from our own experience is the idea that humans have freedom. Now, clearly, we don't have total freedom to do whatever we want in God's world. Remember, God is the one who's in control. But all throughout the scriptures, we see that human beings have the ability to influence what happens in God's world. Our, the choices that we make, they have outcomes. Outcomes, by the way, that we're responsible for. Now, how does human freedom and God's sovereignty fit together? Because it sure seems like those ideas don't mix. And yet, if we believe the Bible is reliable and true, we have to acknowledge that humans have freedom and that God is in complete control. And the fact that that doesn't make sense to our minds is a mystery and a limitation of our understanding. Right? So this is a mysterious thing that God has chosen not to reveal to us or to allow us to understand based on our own limited understanding. Still, if you can hold those two ideas together in your mind, and it, it's possible to, it's possible to live in the tension between God's sovereignty and human responsibility and freedom. Even if you can hold those two ideas together in your mind, that doesn't necessarily make de making decisions any easier. So how do I know if it's God's will for me to go to this college? Or how do I know if this is the right person for me to marry? Should I seek God's will for what I'm eating for dinner tonight? Does he care about what color my shoes are? Does he care about where I go on vacation and when I do? All kinds of things contribute to this difficulty that we have making decisions. And like we said, we know that God has an opinion on it. And as believers in Jesus, as followers, we want to make good and wise spiritual decisions. So there are some ways that we go about doing this, and, and you probably uh, witnessed them or thought of them uh, yourself. So uh, the first thing that we do is often we'll pray. We'll ask God uh, for, for wisdom in making a decision. Or uh, we'll ask for a sign. God, will you show me that this is the right way for me to go? Will you close doors uh, that you mean for me to not, uh, that you mean, mean for me to not go through and open ones that I, you do want me to go through? 
Another one is, is we, we ask him for peace. So we say, God, this is an important decision that I'm going to make. And if this is what you want me to do, will you give me peace? Another thing that we do is to open the scriptures and see if the scriptures have anything to say about it, right? These are all ways that we as believers uh, tend to make decisions. But my argument to you today, and, and what I want to spend the next uh, couple of weeks exploring, is the idea that none of those on their own are sufficient. They're not bad things, right? Uh, those are good things, and I hope that you'll do them. But how do you know, after all of those things, that you're making the right decision? Right, so if you're praying to God, uh, asking him to, to give you wisdom in making a good decision and to, and to give you an impression of what that good decision might mean, God, will you show me what I'm supposed to do? What if he doesn't? Right, because he isn't obligated to. So what if he doesn't, right? So if you go and ask somebody uh, their opinion, if you seek wise counsel, which you should, what if they give you bad advice, right? And how are you supposed to know? Right? If you ask for a sign, how do you know that the sign that you get is from God or if it's from the evil one? Because the evil one might want to trick you. Right? Or if you ask for God's peace, how do you know that the peace that you're getting is, is actually from God? Or is it you just doing something that you wanted to do anyway, right? Based on your own sinful desires. What if we ask God to open a door, right? And, and what if that door isn't opened uh, as an opportunity, but it's actually our ability to make a sinful choice? Right, so at the end of the day, we can do all of these uh, tried and true methods of, of making godly spiritual decisions and still be left with a lot of doubt. Right, and again, the, none of those are, are bad things, but on their own, they're insufficient. Okay, so what I want to do over the next couple of weeks is challenge you with a new way of thinking about making decisions in your life. And as we know, this is extremely important It's because it's something that we do all the time. And, and it is true that God has given us a means and a method of making those decisions, but it's probably not one that we're necessarily familiar with. So what I want you to reflect on today is what decisions do you have to make in your life right now? And, and what do you think God thinks about those decisions? And how do you go about discovering whether or not they're wise and good decisions? Consider that week, come back next week, and we'll start to talk about making decisions in keeping with God's will. Blessings, guys. We'll see you later.